Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday and uh, midweek Wednesday. We got a few things to talk about today. Uh, first of all, the first thing I want to talk about is um, we have some tools that we deal with every day and there are some tools that are more fun to use than others. We always go through that. Like the dake is always fun to use. The lathe, any kind of lathe, metal lathe, wood lathe, they're just fun to use. And um, there are a whole bunch of different tools and some tools are not so much fun to use. You know, they're just annoying and no matter how often you use them. But uh, there's one tool in particular that uh, is just such a, a, a fun tool to use and it's such a simple tool and uh, we're going to talk about that Now first. the tool I'm speaking of, and this is just a couple of the ones I own, is the wonderful draw knife. Look at these, huh? Uh, like I said, these are just a couple. Let me pull one out and, and let's talk about that for a minute. Now, there was a time years ago I used to be really kind of into woodworking and I enjoyed it. Then I got bit by the metalworking bug and that kind of put off my woodworking. But, you know, we were all into it with uh, Norm Abram and things like that. But uh, this is a draw knife. And a draw knife is a, one of the most simple tools that is, there is. And, and what it is, it's a blade. Well, you can see here with two bent handles that you would grip like this and it's like the name says is made to draw the uh the knife towards you now the reason that we're talking about this now is my good friend ben mall has uh just recently acquired one and and he wanted to restore it and things like that now if you look at these tools you can see they're not restored or anything and i kind of left out and some of the blades a little nicked it's because these I used to bring and let the scouts get their first hand on it. And, you know, whenever you're dealing with youngsters, you know, things happen and whatever. So, you know, I would pick these up cheap at a flea market. But there's a couple here, like this one here. And it's funny because if you look at the name on here, uh, right here, can you see that? It says James Swan. James Swan. And, and it's so funny because uh, my good friend Jamie Swan uh, is... <laughs> He uh he runs the uh, the antique tool meet that we uh, that we go to. So that's so funny that uh, I never knew that there was a company other than him who used to make bicycles. But uh, you can see some of these blades are worn for it. Now you look at that and you say, oh, that thing's beat up. But you know what? These these draw knives work in such a way that it doesn't have to be perfect, like a chef's knife or something like that. I've seen blades, I've seen blades worn out, I've seen them banged up, and some are curved belly, some are straight belly. When I say belly over here, some are, you know, like this one here has a bit of a curve to it. This one here, you can see it's a little bit more of a pronounced curve to it. Uh, but the one thing you always know is there's always a usually a bevel on this side, the top side, and the back side is flat. Now, even here, you look at this and you say, what is going on here? There's a little like lip it. I'm telling you, until you try the knife, that's why I don't mess with any knives I was telling Ben, until you try it out because... Over the years, these old timers, they would fine tune their knives that they, they work just for them. Now, here, here's one with a big chip out of it. You see here? Uh, this nice greenly. Uh, apparently, it's a big chip out of it. Now, you could take and you could grind that whole blade down to get that chip. But when you're using a true knife, a lot of times, you know, it really, that chip, you're not even going to notice because it's made for... A lot of times primitive woodwork, you're just roughing out the wood and then you go to the spoke shave and the other shaves that will, will get it down. But let me show you how this works and why it's so much fun. Now, the most fun you're going to have with a draw knife is usually on green wood. And when I say green wood, that is wood that's not yet seasoned, not hardened by drying out. It's usually, this one here was only cut down not too long ago. I got it, I think last week when I was on one of my walks, I knew I was gonna be talking about this. And what's funny is look at over here, you see these little holes here? That is a woodpecker hole where they go around the tree and they make little divots in the tree trying to get insects and things like that. And isn't that something all the way around the tree that has To it. get the most fun out of uh, out of your draw knife, you really would like to ideally have what's called a shave horse or a shaving horse. And what that is, it's a, it's a device that's very simple to make. A lot of woodworkers wind up making one. 
uh, and uh, you make it and it, this holds the wood in position so you can use this outside where you go because you're going to make a lot of shavings and it's a lot of fun to use. Uh, we don't have one down here where I'm going to demonstrate. So I'm going to clamp this to the bench and try and hold it as steady as I can to show you how the draw knife Here works. are two completely different draw knives. You could see, first of all, this one here has a slight curve to it. This one here is straight. This one here only has about a three quarter of an inch blade. This one here has about an inch and a half. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you with the two different types what it does see sometimes you want to use the thick blade as you get under to kind of raise it up and it's just so much fun to use I'm, I'm telling you i'm getting excited already just thinking about it you, that's why you have to pick one of these up at a flea market it doesn't have to be razor sharp look this isn't razor sharp at all i mean i can run my finger back and forth it's not so but i clamped it down here and you're going to see you're going to just take a stance here and you're going to just pull it back okay and what you're doing is we're shaving the bark off of this branch now here's the key when you're doing this and this is like i said this is a not the most ideal way to hold the tree but as you're shaving the bark off a lot of times i would make flag poles uh when we got up to camp i'd drop down a tree and then i would shave all the bark off the off the flag pole but you could see how easy it is to do it and when you're using a draw knife you it's so intuitive quickly you'll learn how it works like you could draw it straight back but you notice if i turn it like this i give it a little i pull one arm uh, a little bit closer to me it gives a an easier cut to the wood but uh, i'm going to show you demonstrate here shave this down a little bit and you'll just see how these work it's so much fun Now I'm going to turn it a little bit to get some fresh bark, and we're going to use the thin blade, okay? This one here is just a little bit sharper than the other one, but I'm going to show you how this one works compared to the other. You'll see it as I was uh, shaving it down, and you'll see how this works and the difference. You see how it takes a thinner bite out of the wood? And I'll show you where that might come in handy if you're using it on dry wood. But uh, I'll give you an idea how this works. Now for me, most times what I would do is I would uh, remove the bark before I, on some wood before I put it into the lathe. But uh, what we're going to do now is um, I'm going to show you on hardwood, dried wood, how the draw knife would work in your shop. Now this is how you might use one, uh, a draw knife in your shop. Uh, this is a very piece of hardwood, very hard. And uh, let's say we want to make a hammer handle out of it, you know, and over here we have the shoulder and we want it to come down. And we uh, This would be the, uh, represent the top eye of the hammer itself. So we want to uh, shave away some wood from here, from this line forward, but not going past there. Let me show you how you might use something like that. Now, the first thing you would do is position it in the vise so that you have the oval here. And then we're going to take our draw knife and starting at this line, the back line, we're going to draw this towards us and you see how it's taking shavings and we're going to do that like this until we get it down where it comes to that line i see because i'm looking at that line from here and i'm going to see how to do it and let me show you how that looks Okay, you can see what we did here. We tapered this off and we have it almost to the line. You know, I could take a little bit more off here, but this is where you do your dry fitting. And then you could take it down with a spoke shave or something. But you see how that is and what you can use it for. So next time you're at the flea market or the boot sale and you see one of these draw knives going for $5, I don't care what kind of condition it is, you buy it. Okay, right now you're probably saying, geez, I, I, I want one of those. And you should be saying that because it's a great tool, a lot of fun, super safe to use. It's one of the most safest tools you can use because your hands are on the handle, you're drawing the knife to you. And unless you're a total chooch, it's impossible to get injured with one of those things. Unless you're a chooch. You know, chooches can get in, in, injured doing dealing with cotton balls. <laughs> they inhale one, next thing they're choking, and you got to give them the Heimlich. Okay, next thing we got a quick tool restoration to do. Uh, okay, let's next get to up. It. Uh, let's see here. There we go. 
Haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, this one is a strange one. It's it's a combination tool. I got it with a lot of plies. I bought oh, a couple of years ago, I guess by now. But I just like the the lines on this thing and and how it feels. And you know the handle. Believe it or not, it's it's a it's a more sturdy kind of plastic than you would think. And it's got no. I'm sure it's a Chinese tool, maybe, but you you can't be sure. But uh, let me show you how this works here. You see it's uh, it's got a little, you raise it up and down so you can get extra width on this uh, wrench here. And when you push it up, you can use these and you got the hammer and you can pull it down again. You got these. <laughs> I don't know. I like it. It's It feels good in the hand. It's probably not modern because of obviously this nut here. Uh, it looks, it looks to me like... Does that look like that's that head was welded on or no? Is that a weld there? I can't even tell. So let's get to the wire. Let's take it apart. Get to the wire brush. See what's going now, on. Now I always find the best way to remove the nut like this when you have it like this is to uh, put this part in a vise instead of trying to put a socket on there. Just put it in your vise and then get the appropriate. This is a five millimeter hex and uh, uh, bondus. Boy, they make the best hex keys. Anyway. Um, we took that off and you can see how it came apart nicely. Has some interesting, this, you know, the forging on here is quality. You know, you can always tell, look at that, look at, there's no, uh, you can always tell junk forgings, you know. We know, we deal with them a lot here and look at that, that's a quality forging. Let's clean it up and, uh, and put it back and the teeth are good. It's got a little nail puller. I tell you, it's it's more quality than it looks. Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation. You could see here, like I said, these are pretty interesting. It definitely is a weld on that hammerhead, but it's a nice weld. You know, they took the time. It's not a a spot weld. That's a, and it's, it's I don't know. I, I look at the teeth here, and it's it's an intricate casting, which means they used a fine grain. Uh, steel, whatever they, they did it with. You see all the teeth are in good shape and the, the little uh, nail remover. Um, I, I find it interesting. Now, again, we're just going to fill this in here because we had to take out the, uh, the old paint. There was some rust mixed in. The handles, see them handles? Now, like I said, the, this is a hard plastic handle. Very quality. Almost like the tenite ones we use. And, uh, and look at this. Made in Taiwan. I knew it. What a nice tool. Made in Taiwan. Okay. And it's got a U.S. patent on it. Uh, I don't see. Is there. Let me see if there's another. I just saw that now. Made. In, I knew it had Taiwan written over it. They don't make junk. I hope that, uh, that things don't go bad for them now. But uh, everything up to now is good. Let's see what we can do here. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what this multi-tool looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. You know, uh, believe it or not, I know this tool, it's not a, it's not an expensive or a rare tool, but it's there's something about it that, that just, I don't know what it is. It's It feels a little bit more quality than a lot of the, I like the multi-tools, you know that. But uh, it's interesting in its design. And like if you look over here, there's a little cutaway. I'm going to show you. You see that little cutaway that's in there? You know, that's in, uh, in forged in. That's how you raise and lower it. There's a little notch on this piece that allows you to raise and lower it. So it doesn't slip when you're using the pipe uh, jaws. I'll show you how this works in a minute. But uh, look how nice the handles come out. I didn't even have to polish them. Just clean them up. I mean... It's it's a nice uh, tool. Let me show you what this, how this works, what it does. It's it's called a six-in-one tool. Did a little research on it. It's funny. I found a couple. They still sell this tool today. Uh, it was uh, invented in 1985 by a Taiwanese gentleman, and he got the patent in 1986. These came up for sale. He was granted the pattern and uh, patent, and they were. Uh, I guess they were sold all around the world and they still have them today. Like I said, you see them. And it's funny because on some of the listings, like uh, it says electric screwdrivers, <laughs> electric drill. I don't know. How can you find an electric, you know, I guess it gets lost in translation. But 
Uh, let me show you what this does, how it works, and uh, some pretty interesting parts about okay, it. Okay, you might figure, where would somebody use a tool like this? You know, this is a great tool that if you only had one tool around the house, you know, this is a, a multi-tool that could actually do the job. Now, the hammer, and what I did was I took all the metal down, I, and I didn't polish anything, but I did shellac everything that's bare steel so it wouldn't rust again. And... Uh, Let's say you had to use a hammer like you had to put a, a pitcher into a wall or something, hang a pitcher. Uh, this will give you, you can see here, it does, you know, do the job as far as hammering the wood. And the, the interesting thing is it has the nail puller here. And it's pretty interesting because when you get under the nail like this, it gives you a very good leverage. And I, I kind of put this in pretty tight, but you can see it rocks off of this piece here. So it gives you a good leverage, you know, to get it up. And so that's interesting. Let's take a look at the pipe. Uh, now, joints. remember, we have two sizes for the uh, pipe. This would be the smallest that you get. So you could grip here. You could see how this grips around. And it does get a very good purchase on that pipe. Now, if you had a larger pipe, you would push it up like this. And it would give you a little bit larger capacity. But it does actually this little crook in here and it does give you a very good purchase on that pipe so it, it's not a, a joke it Next does up work. we have the uh nut uh grip down here you could see how that works if you had a grip here you see it does it does actually work it's not a joke i'm telling you i get a good purchase on here and you can see up to that size there any more than that it would be a little bit uncomfortable so that works uh, then you have this little uh, pliers at the tip here, which is a flush pliers you could grab or, and it says wire twister. And uh, I don't know, I like it. I think it uh, it does perform the jobs that it was meant to do. Well-made tool, very interesting. It's, it's like 30 something years old now. So there we have our vintage six in one Taiwanese, don't be a tool snob tool. <laughs> And uh, this one's so in the closing. Kit. Always like those kind of strange combination gimmick tools. I don't know why. Something about them that somebody thought it out. Somebody sat down with a piece of paper and a pencil and said, "How can I make a tool that'll do everything?" Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye bye.